Hallelujah. Good morning. How are we today? Great and getting better. Well, I have somebody new to introduce to you this morning. Could we please recognize Mr. and Mrs. Brad Miller? Shundai, congratulations. I call her Little Miss Green Shoes. She pulled it off, man. You look like a queen walking in those things. I was impressed, amen? God is so good to us. I should have thought about having to talk after doing all that jumping around and praising God, amen? <laughs> Y'all put up with me here for a few minutes. I'm very excited. We have entered into the ninth month, the month of September. It's very prophetic as we are approaching the Feast of Tabernacles. Those of you that have been here for a while, you know that years ago, some great men in our church, oh my God, they just overwhelmed me with gratitude. <laughs> I met this woman and invited her to come and bring her tabernacle stuff to set up in our church. And they were supposed to be here like at 6 or 7 o'clock at night. They didn't get here till like 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. And I had recruited men to hang all the stuff. And I'm talking about hardworking men, okay? I'm not talking about men that sit around in recliners with their feet propped up. People that worked hard all day. And do you know, when we got here, every one of those men was still here. <laughs> and it just overwhelmed me as they stayed and worked nearly all night long to put these things up and just to create an atmosphere for us to experience God. So uh, this, uh, this coming uh, September the 17th, I think, or the 18th, the uh, men and women in our church are going to construct the tabernacle under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and Carol Ann. And it will be a great experience. You come expecting to receive some fresh revelation of God and from God, your Father. Amen? Uh, there's something about sound. I don't know how many of you could hear this during the song playing. Let me get ready here. Did you hear that? Did you wonder what it was? The first time I ever went to a worship conference, I saw Pam Chesbro do this, who's Clarice Fluitt's best friend. I didn't know Clarice, didn't know Pam Chesbro. But we went to a worship conference in Washington, D.C., and many of you in here went with us. Had my children. Man, I heard those flags crack. I thought, I got to have some of those things. I don't know where you get them, but I'm going to get a pair. And so we brought them back, and we brought the revelation of the teaching of the restoration of the Tabernacle of David. And uh, I loved it because Diane Leary was just like me. When she heard those things crack, she said, hey, where do you get those things? Where do you order them? I got to have a pair of those. There's something about sound in the kingdom of God. Sound is something that the enemy cannot stop. The every prayer, every song, every declaration is still permeating the atmosphere of the earth. Our prayers are before the throne of God. For those of you that know me, you know I love storms. I love to watch thunder and lightning. And this is just my personal belief. I don't really have any scripture to back this. But in Revelation 4, there is some scripture that backs this part of it. That before the throne of God, there's what? Peace and quiet and little angels telling everybody, shh, don't make a peep. God is asleep. Is that what it's like before the throne? No. It's very boisterous. It's very loud. And the scripture says in Revelation 4, it's what? Thunder and lightning. And I'm like, oh, I like that. And see, what's my personal belief is, I believe that that is the prayers of the saints. Shh coming before the throne of God. Every prayer that is prayed according to the scripture, and I believe the thunder and the lightning is the angels grabbing hold to it and coming to perform it in the earth. Amen? There's just a shifting going on at all times when the people of God are praying. Prayer is a very powerful thing. Amen? I'm grateful for the people that God has raised up to pray for us. All right. I got to get my breath. <laughs> all right. Who would think that in order to penetrate a walled city, God would use a sound. Well, he did. 
And everything in the scripture is types and shadows in the Old Testament. And of course, the New Testament is the fulfillment of it. But in Joshua chapter 6, Joshua has become the new leader of the three and a half million people that God has delivered. Amen? Moses is gone, and here's one of his first assignments. Let's take a look at Joshua 6, verses 1 through 5. Now, before I read you the scriptures, let me give you a little background on the walls of Jericho. It was approximately six acres in perimeter to walk around it. The wall stood 12 to 15 feet in height. On top of that, and it was six feet thick. Can you see that? Six feet thick. So chariots could ride around it and guardsmen could march and people could be looking to see who's trying to come. It was virtually impenetrable. On top of that wall, there was another 26 foot high wall. In other words, what we're looking at is approximately a four-story building. They had their own water. There was a spring there that was very plentiful. They, they had no problems having enough water. They had plenty of food. They were very confident, amen, in their, uh, their surroundings and their, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Give me, help me out here. Territory. Who said that? There you go. Thank you, sis. They were very confident in their territory and keeping and maintaining what they had built. Somebody say, but God. <laughs> I love these stories. I absolutely love them. And uh, on top of that, well, let me just, I'll come back to that. Let's go to Joshua chapter 6. Now, Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. Uh, excuse me? Amen? I'm out here. They're in there. And there's this six-foot wall in between us that's 40-something feet high. Uh, okay, you've given it to me. See, when God speaks to you, you've got to mix it with faith. Anything you get from God, you're going to get it how? By faith. It's going to look impossible or it ain't God. Hello? It's a good place to say amen. Come on, y'all, wake up. The first service was lively. Y'all don't need to get quiet on me. I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and the valiant warriors. And you shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You shall do so for six days. And seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. All right, so what kind, of, what kind of trumpets did they have? Which it today is called a shofar, amen? And he said, then on the seventh day, you're to march around the city seven times, and the priest, any priests and kings in here today? And the priest shall blow the trumpets. And it shall be that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city will fall down. Read that. Circle that in your Bible. Flat. This incredible thick high wall will fall down flat and the people will go up every man straight ahead shandai well it happened amen now who would think that would be a strategy to take a city so you got to learn to listen to god and you got to learn to obey him because god's going to tell you to do some ridiculous things and you might as well decide you're going to be a fool for christ because you've been a fool for a lot of other things Hey, I might not have been there, but I know humanity. Amen? Under the influence of alcohol, under the influence of trying to impress a woman, under the influence of trying to do something, you did some stupid stuff, so you just need to say, I'm going to be a fool for Christ. Amen? And I'm, not, I'm just going to go with God no matter what. Now, the beautiful thing about this is there were a few people that were saved out of all of this uh, 
when, when Joshua went in and they, the walls fell flat, they went in and they took the whole city. Now historians have found that there were several places where the wall actually went flat down into the ground and all Joshua and his people had to do was just walk right in. I mean, they didn't even have to step over a brick. You know what I mean? There were other places, historians have said, that it fell down and it created a ramp where they just got to go on up, take their horses on up, amen, and just go in and take the city. A miraculous move of God. But what's even more miraculous is the group of people that was saved inside. Who was the star key person that brought salvation to a group of people? Rahab. A harlot? A prostitute? You mean that's who God picked? I'm telling you, God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> the lineage of Jesus. Thank you very much. God's got a sense of humor. See, God is always looking for the people that are least likely to be recognized by other people to use to do extraordinary things. Amen? And you are part of those people. Glory be to God. With God, all things are possible. All right, let's take a look at another man that did an exploit with the shofar or the ram's horn or the trumpet. Let's go to Judges chapter 7. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give many into their hands, lest Israel become boastful, saying, my own power has delivered me. And I and all who are with me will blow the trumpet and then you also, wait a minute, we, I need to go through to the next one through five. I'm sorry, I miswrote that this morning. We went to 18. Take me back to verse one through five. I'm, so, I'm kind of like Ernie this morning. I'm so excited. I'm getting ahead of myself, and I'm running ahead of stuff, and I'm just messing up, but I'm trying to slow down and do it right. I need Joshua 1 through, I mean, excuse me, Judges 7, 2 through 5. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give Midian into their hands, lest Israel become boastful, saying, my own power has delivered me. Now therefore come and proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, whoever is afraid and trembling, let him return and depart from Mount Gilead. So 22,000 people left. Now, would you say that was a noticeable difference? And can you imagine what the other 10,000 that are left behind, they're sitting there watching, well, there goes Fred and George and Billy. <laughs> oh, there's 10,000 of us here, and we're like, okay. All right, next verse. And so then the Lord said to Gideon, ah, uh, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Therefore, it shall be that he of him whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, he shall go with you, but every one of whom I say to you, this one shall not go, he shall not go. Now you can take me to 18. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to jump ahead to verse 18. And then uh, Gideon starts to give him instruction. Now, in the natural, who remembers what kind of personality Gideon had? Was he a confident warrior? He was a coward. He was a scaredy cat. I like to call him a scaredy cat. Amen? But God, he was God's chosen man. God said, Gideon, I'm going to give you this army. I'm going to give you this war. You watch and see what happens. So he begins to give him instruction. So here's Gideon talking to his men. Now he's down to 300. They watch another 9,700 people walk out. How would you have felt if you'd have been one of the 300? Would you want to wanted to sneak off with the other 9,700 while they were going? But man, see, he got down to the real nitty gritty. I like to hang around with the real nitty-gritty people, amen? The people that's going to stand there in the face of the storm and say, No, Irma, you're not coming onto our soil. You're not going to bring destruction. No, in the name of Jesus. So then he says, When I and all who are with me, he divided into three groups of 100. When, when we blow the trumpet, you blow the trumpet or the shofar all around the camp. And you say, For the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. And when they had just posted 
the watch. In other words, the guards had just changed inside the uh, city that they're getting ready to overtake. And they blew the trumpets. They smashed the pitchers that were in their hand, a sound. And when the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers, they held the torches in their left hands, and they held the trumpets in their right hands for blowing, and they cried, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And each stood in his place around the camp, and all the army ran, crying out as they fled. In other words, all these thousands of people in there began to run. And then when, the, when they blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set the sword of the enemies of Gideon, one against another, throughout the whole army. They got confused, and they began to kill each other. Amen? The very man that they had stood the post with, now all of a sudden they're stabbing him, killing him. And the whole army fled in shark terror at a sound from the Lord from 300. Don't ever underestimate the power and the authority and the anointing of a sound. Amen? I, the title of my message today, see I ran right by that too. I'm just... I'm just too excited today to try. i got to get myself together <laughs> like Ernie. <laughs> but the title of my message today is The Shofar War Cry. Listen to this video. Among God's people to bring forth significant shifts and change. He is sending forth into the earth a sound to open the portals between heaven and earth. This sound of the Lord causes the heavenly realm to move on the earth and it opens the way for those on the earth to move in the heavenlies. From the earliest of times, God chose the ram's horn, or shofar, as one of his instruments to release this sound. Awesome things take place when the shofar sounds according to the command of the Lord God Almighty. Walls fall down, enemies are destroyed, the presence of God manifests, and God's people enter into the covenant cycle of blessing. God has prepared for them. The shofarot are sounded in three distinct ways. First, they awaken and alert God's people. Sharp staccato blasts by watchmen on the wall sound the alarm of approaching danger. In the midst of war, the Terua orders God's armies to attack encroaching enemies. When we hear the Terua, a sequence of nine short blasts we know God is strategically releasing us into our future. The chauffeur wrote also released a breaking sound in a series of three medium blasts called Shevarim. The Shevarim signal a breaking down of what resists the Lord and a breaking in of God's power, grace, and purpose. Both are seen in Gideon's victory over the Midianites. The blast of the chauffeur road and the breaking sound of the pots broke down the great Midianite army and allowed God's people to break through in great victory. The third sound of the shofar is a single extended blast called the tekiah. The tekiah sound establishes the presence and purpose of God in the earth and orders his people in his perfect timing. When the tekiah is lengthened to a great tekiah, it firmly and finally establishes God's sovereign purpose and rule over the person, foe, or territory over which it is blown. Almighty God, release your sound in us, your people, through the blasts of the shofar. Establish us in your cycle of redemption and restoration. Holy Spirit, minister to us with the shofar in our current place and season. Let the sounds of victory, refreshment, alertness, battle, and enthronement move in our soul and surroundings to position us for the days that lie ahead. El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty, you are our deliverer. Overcome our enemies and release over us the sound of your great victory. By your sovereign right hand, establish your rule over us and over our territory. Let your kingdom come. The shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. 
He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on His name, make known among the nations what He has done, and proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for He has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel. shofar on fire tower road <laughs> i love it but we've got our own shofar queen at the shield amen and it's linda and nearly every day linda blows the shofar over you and me many many days she comes over here many nights she comes over here and she'll blow the shofar to the north to the south to the east and to the west and it it brings about let me let me remind you of what it does it does four things it causes walls to fall down see we may not have a Jericho wall that needs to come down but believe me in your family and in mine maybe in your life there are walls that need to be dissipated there are walls that need to come down there are generational curses that need to be stopped with the blood of Jesus and with the sound of the shofar causes walls to come down it causes enemies to be destroyed <laughs> glory be to God you mean the sound of a shofar I mean a sound of a shofar see God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise it, it, he will tell you to do some really weird things I, we've got a lot of seasoned saints in here and I've heard some stories of things that God's told them to do and they're like hey I just I just go ahead and do it and that's what we all need to learn to do be quick to obey don't try to reason don't try to separate it now I want all our online visitors get your broom get your mop get ready if you got a cane get a cane any kind of stick you can pound the ground with amen because we're gonna send a rumble and a sound in just a little bit this week we've all been talking to uh, the storm oh, see I'm getting ahead of myself again all right it causes God's people to enter into the covenant cycle of blessing God has prepared for them I want everything Jesus purchased for me don't you I don't want to miss out on anything and anything we get from God how are we going to get it faith. by faith uh, anything you get from God you're going to get it by faith because you got to believe you got it and then what happens you get it let me say that again you got to believe you got it and then you get it say it with me you got to believe you got it and then you get it. I'm loving it. I'm raising up some weather warriors. <laughs> Shundai. And it causes the presence of God to manifest. Now see, there are three dimensions of God's presence. I love that word. I got to tell you the definition of that. Where did I write it down, Jeff? On your bulletin. That's where I wrote it. Yes. I love the word that Ernie gave us this morning. 
ubiquitous. I never heard of that. How many of you have ever heard of the word ubiquitous? My gosh, I'm behind the times. We got 15 people in here that know a word I don't know. I love it. <laughs> All right, here's how you spell it. Y'all get a pen, get a piece of paper. You need to always have a pen and a piece of paper when you come to church. You got to write down things that the Holy Spirit reveals to you and things he drops in your heart so you can remember it later. Ubiquitous. U-B-I-Q-U-I-T-O-U-S. U-B-I-Q-I-T-O-U-S. I ran up to him as he was leaving. I said, who'd you hear use that word? I figured he'd been listening to Clarice again. Amen. He said, it's one of Josh's spelling words. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Josh, Josh learned to spell ubiquitous. You better learn how to spell it too. U-B-I-Q-U-I-T-O-U-S. It means present, appearing, found everywhere. That's another, that's a synonym for omnipresence. God is everywhere. Even David said, if I make my bed in hell, he's even there. <laughs> God, oh, don't you love him? He's everywhere all the time. And then you have his abiding presence. You see, there are places in history where there is an abiding presence of God. Lorraine and I were watching something uh, yesterday on channel 265 the Believer's Voice of Victory Network, and they were talking about Miracle Valley. How many ever heard of Miracle Valley? All right. Well, gee whiz, that's awesome. I never heard of it. But it was A.A. A. Allen's property, and, uh, and he built several buildings there, and he got a prophetic word. I'm not sure when he died. I'll, I will talk about him sometime. But he got a prophetic word, and the prophecy was that all this property, it's sort of like PTL is what I was thinking when I was hearing it. He said all this property the, it, it's going to be vacated, and it's going to dry up, and there won't be anything going on here. And if you know about A.A. A. Allen, I mean, people that had been born crippled got up out of wheelchairs and walked. People that had been born with no eyes got healed and could see, okay? I mean, he was a radical uh, man of great faith that worked in the three power gifts. We've been studying on the gifts of the Spirit. Who knows what the three power gifts are? I hope Pastor Larry isn't watching. He'll be disappointed. Y'all can't name it. The working of miracles, the gifts of healings, and the gift of faith, those are the three. Power, that's what you got to have. If you, ever, if you ever are spoken to by the Spirit of God to raise the dead, you got to have those three gifts in operation to raise them up, okay? But, I mean, this A.A. A. Allen, he was radical. And, I mean, just people would come from miles around to be healed. And, and uh, you can watch him. Pull him up. Uh, look at, uh, what's the guy's name that teaches on all of God's generals? Roberts Lairdon. Oh, if you've never watched his series on God's generals, Catherine Kuhlman, A.A. A. Allen, Jack Coe, all these people, you need to watch it because guess what? Their mantle is still here. When they crossed over, Oral Roberts, Kim Clement, when they crossed over, they left it here. And it's for anybody that wants a piece of it. Reach up and take it by faith. Amen? Go do something with it. All right, here's the three distinct sounds of the shofar. But anyway, let me finish my prophecy. The, the word of the Lord was that this property will rise up again and it will be a miracle healing piece of property. People will come from near and far and there will be creative miracles. So we're probably going to be the part of the generation that's going to see that. Amen? All right, uh, so here's the three distinct sounds of the shofar. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. I can't, I can't keep it together because I'm watching Irma it's supposed to be the biggest storm ever known in history. And I'm watching Irma's effects shrink down. And I'm hearing the news reporters saying, well, you know, it's not as bad as we thought it had. And yeah, you know, we dodged the bullet, but it's still dangerous. Y'all stay inside. And, and I'm thinking, man, the prayers of the saints of God are changing this thing. They are diminishing this thing into just a torrential rainstorm. Amen? And, you know, some people say, well, you can't do things like that. Well, of course you can. God gave us dominion. He gave us authority. And guess what? He doesn't take it back. Do you give a gift to somebody and come by a month later and say, give me my baseball back. I'm not giving it to you. You know, no. He gave it to the believers on the earth. And see, so many people are saying, oh, God, do this. And what do you think God's saying? You do it. 
Hello. Come on, you missed a good place to say amen. You do it. I gave you what? Authority, power, dominion. Use it. Well, use it for what? I don't know what to use it for. Well, start practicing. When you're watching the news and they say, and here comes Jose right behind it, you look at that TV and you say, oh, no, you don't in Jesus' name. You get out there to see. You're not coming back over those islands. I love it. Tori sent me a, a video this week, and I mean, it. she just primed my pump. She, mine and Deb's. And she said, hey, PK, here's how we get rid of that storm. And it was a cat cur video on training up um, Weather warriors. <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get me some weather warriors. Amen? And uh, she said, you, you see that storm coming? She said, you get a stick and you pound that earth and you say, oh, no, you don't. You're not coming in here. And then she got all over the people in Houston. She said, what's the matter with y'all down there? She said, get out there and talk to that storm. <laughs> Command it to go in the name of Jesus. And uh, I'm telling you, you just, you just got us all fired up, Tori. We loved it. <laughs> God bless you. And it just makes me so proud that she is uh, she's carrying on the legacy of what Shield of Faith is all about. And many, many, many of our young people are. But she is born and bred here, went to school here, amen, grew up here, and been watching her mama and me and Linda and other Kathy Pittman act all crazy and do all kind of weird stuff. And she caught the spirit, man. I, hey, I could go on to be with the Lord now and I, I could know it's going to carry on. Amen? <laughs> Not just her, but many, many others. And you see, you got to understand, I dare you. I dare you to do something. Y'all ready for a dare? I'm going to double dog dare you. Read through the Gospels in the next 30 days. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And take note, it's only five chapters a day. You waste that much time watching news and eating donuts and drinking Cokes. Just read five chapters a day and look and see what Jesus did because he's our pattern. We're supposed to do what he did. Now, did he speak to storms? Did they listen? All right then. And then when Jesus left, what did he say to us? Greater things. He, I love it, Donna. He said, greater things than, than what I've done are you going to do. Well, who's ready to start doing something greater? Hey, and look here. It's just like the things of God, you don't start off in your third year of college. What year is that? What do they call that? A junior. You don't start off there. You got to start off where? Kindergarten, preschool. You got to start off in preschool. You got to get your broom out when, when they say Jose's coming and you go, bam, bam. No, you're not. And then you think, boy, I'm glad nobody was here to see that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to get a towel out and you got to go, woo, 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 you know, <laughs> at home. See, you start at home. You do these things at home, in your car when you're riding. You stretch your hand out. Oh, another one of my little sweet young girls that grew up here in this church is a product. She, she said, hey, I rode by your house today, and I stretched my hand out, and I prayed. And I said, thank God. I said, do it every time you pass. Stretch your hand out. Shut up, Abakaya. I appreciate it. If you read through the Gospels, and you start to do what Jesus did. You watch what he did. He healed the sick. He cleansed the leper. He forgave people. He loved people. Amen? He didn't condemn. He loved. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. All right, back to the shofar. Here's the three sounds. We have the teruah, which is a signal of approaching danger. We have the nine short blasts that we know that God is strategically releasing us into our future. That is the chivalry. And then the last one is uh, the breaking sound, the breaking down of what resists the Lord. Don't y'all know people that resist the Lord? And you wonder, why would you want to resist God? God's the best thing that's ever happened to us. Amen? Why would we want to be obstinate and, re and resist the anointing and the power of Almighty God? So you sound that shofar. And if you don't have one, you want to buy one, talk to Linda. She'll tell you where to get the good ones. But... Um, you want to be a part of breaking in of God's grace, power, and purpose. And that's what, what we heard of in Gideon's story. And then the third one is the tekiah. And that's the long sound. It establishes the presence and the purpose of God in the earth. And it orders his people in his perfect timing. Oh, God. Firmly and finally establishes God's sovereign rule over the person over the foe or the territory over which it was blown. 
Well, let's bring the weather warriors up here. I know y'all have been talking to Irma. I have too, glory be to God. But I'm going to tell you, something happens when you get corporately, okay? When you get the corporate anointing, it becomes much, much stronger. The greatest one in here that has the most faith and, and exercises the most dominion and authority, that's awesome. But you put all of us together and we just grew to 100,000. You know, I don't know how to do all that math, but don't you remember that stuff? where it was like to the 10th power. God says, one puts 100, one puts 1,000, two puts 10,000, three, it increases to 100,000, and it keeps exponentially growing all the way. Amen? So now, for those of you little timid people that, you know, you think, I don't know about this, well, I want you to stand up and just pat your foot on the ground, okay? If you're a little more demonstrative, stomp your foot on the ground. <laughs> make a sound. Make a dominion. All right, Jeff is going to lead us in prayer. And Linda, our shofar queen of the shield, you know, the other day I had some people over at the house, and we were talking and working on some things, and all of a sudden I heard the shofar. I said, Linda's here. <laughs> she was out way beyond my driveway. Boo boo. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm telling you, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If the walls of Jericho that were 40 feet high and 6 feet thick could come down with the sounding of a shofar and the shout of the men and the women of God, the walls can come down in your life and mine, and we can use our authority to back off this storm and any other storm that comes. Help us out, Jeff. Father, we're going to come to you as one and we're going to speak the word that you have given us and the authority that you've given us over this storm. So, Father, we come to you today believing that you are the God of creation. You are the God of salvation. You are our protector. You are our shield. Oh, Lord, we rest in you. Father, <laughs> We cry out to you as your word says. If you will cry out to me, I'll answer you. So Lord, we cry out to you. We ask you to intervene for us. We heard the shofar. We are awake. We are warned. We, we want to be ready and on alert. But Lord, we also want to be able to shout to you, Lord. Shout out the Word. That's today. Today we can shout out the Word. And that, and that will bring forth, that will open up the portals between heaven and earth and release His angels to do God's Word. So we need to say His Word. So Lord, we speak to Irma the hurricane who has her path, who has her ways. But Lord, we, we say no. You cannot advance in your strength any longer. We say we speak to you, Irma. We say you are going to be brought low and brought useless and just a wind blowing. Lord, we say you bring no harm, no life lost. Lord, we say that you are the one who controls the path of the storm. You are in charge. So we we say that we we speak word against this storm to come against it to bring it down to make it weak lord we just thank you for that and we rest in your presence we call forth your angels to go out before us and do thy will lord we just thank you we we acknowledge that you are our god and we say you you alone and you're in charge so lord we just speak to the storm. We say you will be just a little whimper. Your, your power will weaken. <laughs> you have your ways. But God says, we will say, peace, be still. Peace, be still to the storm. You will be rendered harmless in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. We, we say it and we pound the earth. We pound it and say, you can come no further. This is the land of the Lord. This is His land. 
We are blessed because you are our God. And so we use this as a representation that the storm can do no harm to our Lord's land. In Jesus' mighty name. Now let's lift up a shout. Yay! For the Lord, victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. I just, I, I absolutely and positively um, take all of you in to be weather warriors with your broom, with your mop, with your sticks of the Lord, with your authority, with the words of your mouth. Make a difference in the earth. Amen. <laughs> oh, it might look foolish to the world, but in God, it's a sound. It's a declaration going out into the earth. Now, this video that Deb is getting ready to play now is the people that gathered on the shores of Miami to speak to the storm. And they brought their shofars and they stood out there and they began to speak and make a sound and make a declaration. And they said, no, in Jesus' name, you're not coming in here to destroy our land. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. And we refuse to let the storms bring destruction and take our lives. We decree and declare the blessing of the Lord is upon us and it maketh no shame, no disarray. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So be it across the land of the United States of America in Jesus' name. One more time, give a shout. Hey! The sound of the Lord. The sound of the people of God. God bless you. We love you. Go do the word. If you want to watch the shofar video online, it's, you go to YouTube. It's shofar war cry. Look at all our generations up here. I love this. You know, the scripture talks about one generation shall praise him to another. Amen. To God be the glory. We love you. God bless you.